Ban Ki-moon en la famosa plaza de Cádiz, en la capital de Egipto, el Cairo, donde Ban Ki-moon se ha reunido con el, presidente, el responsable de la Liga Arabia en Roma, ¿eh? quien se ha crítico con el rumbo de las actuaciones de la coalición en Libia. Esta hora precisamente vuelve a reunirse a este nuevo ayuda la región de Libia. Bueno, well, hola bien. Just tuning around on my uh, ultimate regen receiver. Uh, this outfit uh, was built by John Stonebeck, I believe was his right name. I can't say his call right off the top of my head. He lives in Virginia, and uh, it was from uh, built from an article in Electric Radio magazine, and uh, it was to build to try to come up with the ultimate regenerative receiver, and uh, this is what he built. But the uh, receiver uh, chassis is in here. It has plug-in coils for lots of different bands. Uh, and this side has the power supply. And he also built a national select eject circuit uh, in, in here. If you're familiar with the uh, 50 national receivers, uh, I think NC125, some of those had select eject. And it was uh, a, a peak or a null filter that you could tune in. And that's all audio and power supply and everything's in this cabinet over here. Pretty neat set. Uh, a few years ago he uh, put the word out that he was looking for a home for it, that he was uh, downsizing and he needed some place to, uh, to put it. And so uh, I offered to, uh, to give it a home here in, uh, in my collection. And it's a nice piece. It's, it's amazing. It's daytime it doesn't do very well. I mean at night it really, it really works good. You know, when the bands are good and uh, the regenerative receiver is, is quite amazing in how it will receive single sideband. I can, I can do, you know, tune in a single sideband to make it perfectly as audible, or just as clear as it will on my ICOM 706 in the ham shack. It's a sideband receiver, sideband rig. So it works really good. Uh, but uh, it's in the display room today, just uh, kind of pondering things in here. Uh, the Charlotte Antique Radio Conference is coming up uh, that we call Antique Radio Charlotte. Uh, this is Monday. The conference will be here to Thursday and uh, it's going to be quite a week. Uh, I've got I've got list after list. I'll sit down and start making another list, writing down things, trying to remember everything that I need to get together. Uh, we'll spend Wednesday packing my truck and my wife's car because I don't have enough room in either one of them to get everything. So we've got to take two vehicles to call all the, the club stuff, the meat stuff, and the stuff that I want to take too. So I kind of came out here was just <laughs> trying, to, trying to get my head around antique radios for a little while and, and decide what I wanted to take with me. Uh, and I sat, well, I sat down at the desk here and started moving some things around. Uh, this, is, this is a piece that I got last year. Uh, this is a, a really, really interesting tube. Uh, it's a CV-1098. It was uh, my friend Phil Taylor from England brought this over last year. He brought, so he brought two of them. I got one and, and my uh, fellow tube collecting buddy Kurt Klein, he got the, uh, got the other one. This tube was used, uh, if you remember any of your World War II history, in, in England, uh, before actually before we got in the war, uh, England was had a, a system that they called was called chain home, and it was a a, a series of large broadside radar, very early, very crude radar units looking out across the English Channel toward France and, and Europe, trying to see German planes coming to bomb England, and uh, this tube came out of. One of the uh, one of the chain home transmitters. Phil is part of the group that's uh, that's uh, trying to save one of them as a historical uh, place. And uh, this one came out actually was removed from one of the transmitters. It was it's uh, I think 1936. Uh, it was originally designed for for English television. England was a little bit before us in what what we would call modern electronic television. And so this this was in their television in transmitters, a tube similar to this. They changed it, put fluoride filament in it, and used it in the chain home transmitters. So I'm really proud of it. I got it home and I was trying to figure out how to display it. And I remembered that I happened to have this uh, these pieces of one inch Lexan. And so I did a little drilling and got some, some studs to mount it on. So now it sits nice and stable. 
and it's a nice piece to look at. I'm, I'm real proud, of, real proud to have that in the in the collection. I may, I may get together and make a uh, make a contest entry out of this for the for the equipment coming contest coming up this week. Uh, see how much time I've got. Uh, the other thing here on the desk, it, it probably deserves a uh, a show of its own. This is a spark transmitter that was built by a young man named John Womack in Reedsville, North Carolina in 1920. He was 12 years old when he built it. It's almost completely built from, from scratch. The only part on it that I can identify that was a bolt piece is this coil form. You see this, 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 this uh, and actually I think it's made out of Formica. You think of Formica being countertops and stuff from the 60s and 70s. I've seen this advertised in 1920 QST, that coil form. But everything else, the, uh, the, the gap for a spark, spark gap, the glass blade condenser, the cigar box back here on the back has a Model T Ford spark coil built into it, uh, a hand-built uh, transmitter receiver changeover switch, and a hand-built Morse code key built out of old drawer parts and hardware, stuff that he could pick up out of the junk box. The, uh, the terminals on the, uh, the, the spark gap are, are battery terminals off of, uh, you know, six volt batteries. Uh, really, really proud to have that. My friend uh, Dave Raleigh got this for me, got, got this out of an estate and made sure that, uh, that I got it. And I'm really tickled to have it. Twelve years old. Can you imagine a twelve year old kid now building something like this? Uh, you know, they're playing video games and sending text messages and, and doing that kind of thing. But to sit down and build something like this, I've got his logbook, I've got the, the uh, from the from the gentleman that built this thing. I uh, can't say the call right off the head of my head. It's a four, of course it's a four something call, but uh, it was a two letter call. And uh, really, really tickled to, to have that in the collection. And uh, it's, uh, you know, that that's the kind of history that, that's the kind of history that needs to be preserved. Uh, the uh, the desk that it's sitting at, my wife bought me. Uh, I found it in a antique shop right after, right about the time that we had finished this room, and I wanted uh, an early uh, vintage, you know, uh, mission style, I like mission oak style, mission style furniture. And she found this mission library desk for me, and I've had uh, various early ham stations set up on it over the years. And so this one is, uh, this is what's on here now, but I like it. Got some early QSL cards underneath the glass on the tabletop. And uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. The on the air sign you see lit up up here, uh, that's an original mid 30s. Uh, on the air sign came from WBT. And uh, so I was, uh, I'm, I'm real proud of that also. All right, time's running out. My, the, memory on the, the memory card on the uh, camera is about full. And I hope you've enjoyed this visit to Radio Heaven TV, and uh, we'll do another one. Uh, might even do one during the show, depending on how things go. Uh, and if you're coming to the show, look forward to seeing you. And if not, uh, we'll, we'll be sure to post things on the Internet and on the forum and stuff about it. Take care and have a good week, and have a good spring. I think today's the first day of spring. Take care.